Hey everyone, in this video, I'll walk you through how to use the Scene Editor and Phaser Editor V4 for a level design. Whether you're building a platformer, top-down RPG, or anything in between, the Scene Editor gives you a visual way to lay out your levels, no coding required. We'll look at how to place objects like platforms, enemies, and the player, using snapping and grids for clean positioning, organizing our scene with layers for backgrounds, gameplay, and UI, and understand how all of this affects how things are rendered in our game. Let's jump in. Let's start with the scene editor itself. On the left, we have the outline view. This shows all the object in our current scene in a hierarchy. In the center, we've got our main scene canvas where you can drag and place your game objects. On the right, we have our inspector, and this is going to show properties based on what's currently selected in your main scene. By default, this will show properties regarding the scene itself. And if we choose one of our game objects, our inspector is going to update with the variable information and properties related to the object we just selected. At the bottom, we have our files view, and this will show all of our project files in a tree structure. And then we have our blocks view. Our blocks view are going to show our building blocks of our scene editor. So this is gonna have our built-in game objects and then any of the assets we've loaded for our project, like our images, our sprite sheets, and then any prefabs that we create, they'll be visible here. Now that we reviewed the scene editor, We'll start with an empty scene and we'll start building this out by adding in our game objects. I'm going to start with our background image. And so from our built-in blocks, after we load in our assets, we can drag in our background image into our scene. And so this is going to position our object wherever we drop out our scene. If we want to move it around, we can click and drag our object around. We can also update our X and Y properties over in the transform tool in our inspector. So by default, when we load image assets into our game, and we drag them into our scene editor, Phaser Editor is going to create them as a game object type of image. For our background image, we actually want this to be a tile sprite. To create a tile sprite, go to our built-in blocks. If we go to texture, we can drag in a tile sprite block. Now this will create our game object type and we can choose our texture from our assets. So if we do select, we can now choose our background image. Another way to create our tile sprite is if we choose our original image game object, if we choose our type here, we can change it from image to one of our other built-in blocks, and we can change it to a tile sprite. So I'm gonna delete our second game object here, and now for our tile sprite, we're gonna want this to take up our full width of our current scene. We're gonna need to update our size properties for our tile sprite. So over our inspector, if we expand size, we'll wanna update our width to match the width of our game. And so for my example here, this would be 256, and for our height, we're going to leave this at 112, so we keep our image at the size it is. So now we just want to update our positioning, and so I'm going to update our X position to be 0, and we're going to do 56 for our Y. And now we're going to update the origin on our game object. So by default, when we add in our game objects, our origin is going to be in the center of that object. And when we position our game objects, Phaser Editor is going to use that origin for positioning our object. So when we say 0, 0, that means the center of our image needs to be placed in a location. Instead, we're gonna update our origin to be in our top left-hand corner here so we can position based on that. To do that, we can update our origin through the inspector, and so we're gonna update our X value and our Y value, and we'll see as we update those values, our yellow circle here is updated to show where our new origin is. So now that we've updated our origin, if we revert our change to our position, so we're gonna put X back to zero, so it's going to align with our left-hand side of our screen, we're going to make y be 56, and now it's going to position our object down here in our scene. So now we add in our first game object, we want to test our changes. I'm going to hit play to launch our game into our browser. So now if we come over to our browser, we should see our phaser game. We should see our new tile sprite image taking up the full width of our canvas element. So currently it looks like our tile sprite taking up our full width and height, but what's actually happening is in my current level, I've updated my background color on my camera to be black, and so that's why my background is black here. I come back over to Phaser Editor and I open up our level file and we go into our code. We'll see we have that code here. So I'm just gonna update this to be white. Now if we come back over to our browser, we'll see our tile sprite is only taking up our width and height that we defined. Next, I'll add in our player sprite. For this, I'm gonna use my player sprite sheet. I'm gonna expand it and choose one of my frames from my sprite sheet. I'm gonna drag that into my level. So by default, because I'm using my sprite sheet, it's gonna give my image, it's gonna give my game object the type of image. I'm gonna update this to be a sprite. We'll replace it, we'll do save. Now let's add an enemy sprite. For this, I'm gonna use my enemy sprite sheet. I'm gonna choose one of our frames. I'm gonna place this on the right hand side of our screen. We can wire up the logic later, but this helps us visualize our gameplay flow. 
I'm going to update our game object type to be from an image to be a sprite. I'm going to do replace. I'll do save. If we come back over to our browser, we should now see our three game objects on our screen. Now we can create some platforms using some basic rectangle shapes or tile sprites if you have them. I'm going to add a couple of simple blocks to act as our floor and our wall for our level. To do this, I'm going to go into our built-in blocks. I'm going to choose shape. Now I'm going to drag in our rectangle. So now we can change our color and our size in our properties panel. So for this rectangle here, I'm going to have this be part of our floor. So I'm going to update our size. For my width, I'm going to do 128 pixels. For my height, I'm going to do 16 pixels. And now I'm going to update our color. And so now for my fill color, I'm going to do 2E. 063A. And now for the stroke color, I'm going to have this be black. So I'm going to do 000000. So now if we want to move our game object around our scene, instead of manually updating our X and Y values, I'm going to choose our translate tool here, which now will allow us to drag and move our game object around. So I'm going to position our floor under our player. Now I'm going to create another instance of our floor. I'm going to place it over here. So now I just need to create a wall so my player can't leave our level. So I'm going to copy our game object one more time. And now we're just going to update our width and height. So for our width, I'm going to do 16 pixels. For my height, I'm going to do 224. Now we're just going to move our game object over so it overlaps with our floor. And just for fun, we're going to add an image that's going to represent one of our UI elements, our player's health. For this, I'm going to use this life bar sprite sheet. I'm going to drag in my first frame over here into my top left-hand corner. So now if we save, if we come back over to our browser, we're going to see all the new game objects that we've added to our scene are now visible here. So now that we've seen how we can drag and drop our game objects into our scene, let's talk about our grids and snapping. These are super useful for aligning game objects precisely in our level. You can enable snapping by making sure you choose no game objects in your scene. Then over in the inspector, in our snapping panel, we can enable snapping, and then we can choose the width and the height of our grid that we want to use. So currently our size is set to 32 pixels by 32 pixels. And what this is going to do is when we choose one of our game objects, now when we move our object around, it's going to snap to those positions on our grid based on the origin of our game object. If we want to update our size, we can come over here and we can just do 16 by 16 pixels. And now our grid's much smaller and we have more options for snapping our game objects. And so with our snapping on, objects are going to move and resize along with our grid making it way easier to line up things cleanly. This is especially helpful for tile-based levels or making sure your platforms line up just right. So let's go ahead and update some of the properties in our game objects. So for our wall game object, we're going to have our position for x be 0, y be 64. We'll keep our origin in the center. And now for our first floor, we're going to update our x position. We want this to be 0. We're going to update our y value to be 160. We're going to update our origin to be in the top left-hand corner, so we're going to do 0, 0. Now we're going to do the same thing for our other rectangle. So let's update our origin. We're going to do 0, 0. Our x value, we're going to do 160. And for our y value, we'll do 160. Finally, for our player, we'll want our game object to be lined up with our floor. So we'll update our position. For our x value, we're going to do 48. And we'll do 144 for our y value. Now for our enemy, we're just going to move them just a little bit. So we'll update our x value. We're going to do 244. And we'll do 96 for our y. And then lastly, for our UI element, we're going to update our X position to be 8, our Y position to be 8. And let's update our origin. We're going to do 0, 0. Finally, if we save, let's come back over to our browser. Now when we refresh, all of our game objects are positioned based on our latest settings. So now we started adding new game objects to our scene. We see that our hierarchy is becoming a little bit harder to keep track of where our game objects are. So as our scene grows, organizing with layers becomes really important. Right now, everything is on the default layer for our game, but we can clean this up. To do this, I'm going to create a game object called a layer where I can position my other game objects inside it. So to add a layer to our scene, we have a few different options. First is from our built-in blocks. If we go under grouping, we can drag in our layer game object into our scene. This will add our new game object over here in our hierarchy. And so we're going to update the name of our game object, and we're going to call this background. Is now for our game object, we want to place our background image inside this layer. To do that, if we right click on our game object, we can go to parent and we can go to move to parent. And now this will allow us to choose our layer and we can choose our background layer. What this will do is this is going to make this game object a child of our layer game object. So now we can collapse our layer and hide those game objects to keep our hierarchy nice and clean. Another way to create one of our layers is if we right click on our outline, we can do add object grouping and then do a new layer. For this, we'll do our UI layer. 
So now we'll want to update our life bar to go into that layer. So I'm going to right click, go into parent. We're going to move to parent. Let's choose our UI layer. Next, we'll create a layer for all of our platform and our wall game objects. To do that, I'm going to choose all of our rectangle game objects. I'm going to right click. We're going to go down to parent and we'll do create layer with selection. This is going to create a new layer game object and automatically place all of those game objects we had selected as children of that layer. I'm going to update our layer name. We're going to call this level. Finally, we're going to create a layer for our player and our enemies. So I'm going to choose those two game objects. I'm going to do right click, parent, and we'll do create layer with selection. Now for this layer, I'm just going to call this gameplay, and now we'll save. So one thing to keep in mind is the ordering of our layers in our game object is important because this is going to affect the default rendering in our game. So game objects and layers that are higher in the hierarchy are going to appear above our other game objects in our scene. So as an example, I'm going to move our UI layer down to the very bottom. So if I do right click, I'm going to go to layout, we're going to do sort, and we're going to do move to bottom. And if we save, what we'll see is that our background image is covering up part of our life bar now. And so if we come over to our browser and refresh, we'll see now our life bar gets cut off from our tile sprite. Likewise, if we take our gameplay layer, I'm going to move this to the bottom as well. So we're going to do layout, sort, we're going to do move to bottom, we'll save. We're going to see our player and enemy game objects disappear. If we come over to our browser, because our background layer is rendering on top of our other layers, it's now hiding those game objects in our scene. So this is something to keep in mind when you're organizing objects in your hierarchy. You want to keep in mind their positioning because that's how they'll be rendered by default. Let's go ahead and organize our layers. We're going to move our UI layer to the very top. So we're going to do layout, sort, we're going to do move to top. We'll want our gameplay to be in front of our background and then our level. So we're going to do our gameplay. Let's do layout, sort, we'll do move to top, and then we'll just move it down. So now that we finish updating our layers, let's run our game and see how everything looks. You can already see our layout in action. Our background color fills up our entire screen. Our background image tile screen takes our full width. Our player and our enemies are in place. Our platforms are lined up and our UI sits on top of everything. Even without gameplay logic, having a clean scene layout makes development a lot easier. That's a quick look at using the Scene Editor and Phaser Editor V4 for level design. We cover the Scene Editor UI, placing and editing different types of game objects, using snapping and grids for pixel perfect placement, organizing your scene with layers for cleaner structure and better rendering control. I hope this helps you start building your own levels more confidently. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe for more Phaser Editor tutorials, and I'll see you in the next one.